All right. A couple of things um, before we get started. I did send y'all a couple of emails um, Friday, whenever. Um, first email said that, um, through Alex, but it went to wherever. First email said that the Hub does a survey about once a semester just to see what are we doing right in the Hub, what are we doing wrong, what do you want. Like, if you want the Hub open on Saturday, if you want it open earlier or later, it's too cold, or you want more tutors, whatever you want to tell us. So, um, I did send you an email by Thursday of this week. It's totally anonymous. You just click on the link. Um, it's a pretty short survey. Um, hold on, I'll show you what it looks like just so that you know that it's nothing. You just click on the link and it pulls it up. Um, a couple of how many classes are you taking? Um, how do you spend most of your time? Do you just take, te take tests? Do you waste time? How helpful is it? What class are you taking? And just a couple of short, I find it useful, not useful. It's 14 questions. That's it. And you just say finished. So it's not that, I mean, even if you want to do it during class on Thursday, that's fine. Okay? I'll remind you in class on Thursday. So I sent you an email. I sent you an email to take the survey. We take this feedback and try to make the hub better for y'all. So I will remind you on Thursday, if you haven't done the survey, just to take a few minutes um, to do the survey. It's 14 questions. You just fill it out and hit finished. That's all it is. So that's the first thing, is the survey. The second thing that I sent you, some of you who were here before this semester, we did something called tutor.com. It was where Florence Darlington Tech paid money for y'all to have free tutoring services 24-7. Well, our tutoring services last for, tw uh, for 12 months. Well, tutor.com was the service we used last year. This year, we're using a service called BrainFuse. Again, we pay the money for y'all to have the service. So, I don't know if your other teachers are telling you about it, but I'm going to tell you about it. This one is called BrainFuse. Um, we currently are helping you with business classes, computer technology classes, English, math, and science. Other areas will be added soon. And what you do is you have to log into D2L, click on a course, go to content, and click on BrainFuse. Now, I will tell you, even though I don't use D2L in this class much, but if you click on my math class, so you go into D2L and go to my math class, I have it listed in my class. I actually put a um, announcement out there, and there's a little YouTube video. Did you check your message? Now. That's okay. You click on um, your online tutoring, there's a, a thing out there, and there's a YouTube video to watch it. But in order to use BrainFuse, you have to be logged into D2L because they have to know that you're a Florence Darlington Tech student so that you can get the free services. So, literally, you log in, go to my account, my class, you click right here on BrainFuse, and click on BrainFuse. Uh-oh, why is it not letting me do it on this class? BrainFuse. Well... Maybe it's because I've already clicked on it today. Let me see. Oh, maybe I'm in the wrong... Hold on. Now, this did happen to me earlier. I have to be in... Hold on. It worked when I did it today in Math 107. Let me see. I have to switch something. But brain fuse, brain fuse. Now, when I open it, it comes up to faculty dashboard, but yours is going to look like this and you just click on the subject you want help on. So if you need math help, you click on math, and you say what kind of math are you doing, like pre-algebra. And you hit connect, and it's a live person that you're talking to. Yeah. Or if you need help with science, what are you doing, biology, chemistry, anatomy, and then you hit connect. I don't know how many hours they let you have it. I don't know anything about it. 
But I do know that you have to be connected through D2L. So I just wanted to let you know that. We good? Mm -hmm. Now, another thought. I know some of y'all are on the struggle bus with your IDs. You know, you stand at the door, you can't find your ID or you don't know your number or whatever. Just a helpful hint, take a picture of your ID. Y'all can't, y'all always have your phones. Take a picture of your ID and if you show your ID on your phone, they can scan it from your phone. Just FYI. I do that all the time when I go to somewhere that has to have a scanning thing. I always have a picture on my phone and I do it for my phone. So if you take a picture of your ID, as long as it's straight, you can hold up your phone and they can scan it from your phone instead of having to dig it out. Yes? I mean, it ain't got nothing to do with this, but um, I, don't, I lost my license. I took a picture of it. I did the same thing like you did. Like, when I got people who like, what's your license number? I'm like, hold up. I got to go through my phone. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. And there's also an app called um, Keyring, K-E-Y-R-I-N-G, a free app called Keyring. I put all my, like, if Walgreens or CVS or all those places that have the little cards that you put on your key ring, you can download that. And I have books, Barnes & Noble, all of those. I put all of those and I just pull them up. You can keep all those little things and scan them in. And I have them all right there in alphabetical order. The library, you can do all of them right there. And it pulls up the scan code thing. You can add Florence Harlan's check in there. So just FYI. Alright, so those were the couple things that I wanted to remind you of. Um, so we had the Hub Survey, we had Brain Fuse. Now, um, I told you downstairs, but I'm reminding you again that your scheduled assessment three is on October 19th which is Thursday next week. Right around the corner. Right so your goal is to be at 75% and out of module three. Now, some of you are on the struggle bus in module three. A couple of you haven't gotten to module three yet. But my goal for you this week and next week is for me to talk about Module 3 as much as I can. So even if you're not in Module 3, when you see the scheduled assessment next week and you get Module 3 questions, you will know how to do them. Okay? So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about Module 3 today and Thursday and Tuesday as much as I can. And most of you aren't doing well or struggling on stroke, um, the Module 3 because you haven't seen this stuff since middle school or some of you may not have seen this stuff ever. When you get in Module 4, I promise you, Module 4 is going to click for you better because it's positive and negatives and solving equations, stuff y'all did in high school. Okay? So, my goal today is to go through as much as I can in Module 3 and then we'll pick up on Thursday. So even if you're not in it, you need to be listening. Not sleeping, not texting. You need to be listening, even if you're not in Module 3. All right, first thing you need to know, some of this is going to be easy breezy, some of this is going to be hard, but you need to listen. Parallel lines. Parallel lines are railroad tracks. Parallel lines are lines that never cross. They can be up and down, they can be sideways, they can be flat. Parallel lines never cross. Perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines are lines that cross at a right angle. So if I take a piece of paper and I put that piece of paper in the corner, put that piece of paper in the corner, perpendicular lines are going to be able to have a right angle at all four corners. That makes it a perpendicular. So if my lines cross any other way, I call it neither. So they're either parallel, they're perpendicular or they're neither. Those are my three choices. Parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So parallel, and y'all, look at the L's. Parallel. The two L's in parallel make it look like it's parallel. Parallel. Perpendicular makes right angles. 
And any time I do that, I'm telling you that it's a right angle. A right angle is like the corner of a sheet of paper. And then neither is going to be anything else. So if we look at these pictures, your three choices are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So what do you think the first one is? Neither. 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 Because if I continue that on, it's not going to cross at a right angle. That's not a right angle. This is not a right angle. This is not a right angle. So that's going to be neither. What are these? Parallel. Yeah. Parallel. What are these? Perpendicular. perpendicular. Because, and you don't have to have a right angle. You can put your piece of paper. That's going to be perpendicular. What is that going to be? Neither. neither. So as long as you know the language, it's not that hard. Neither, parallel, perpendicular, and that's going to be neither. Good? Okay, three different things. Mm -hmm. You have a segment. A segment is when both ends are cut off. So if you have a piece of string and you cut off both ends, that's called a segment. A line is when both ends go forever in either direction. A ray is when one end is cut off and one end goes on forever. So I think of a ray as when you have the sun, sun rays. It starts there and it goes on forever. So a ray starts in one place and goes on forever like a sun ray. So the first thing they want us to do is they want us to identify it. So for this one I have to say is it a line, a ray, or a segment? This is going to be a segment. It's a segment because you cut it off. It ends in both. It's a piece, a segment. What is the next one? That one's a ray because it started and it went all the way. What's the next one? A line because it goes forever in both directions. Now, when you name it, you name it by its endpoints. So the first one is either going to be called segment FE or segment EF. Both of those are correct. The last one is either going to be called line AB or line BA. Because both of them are segments or both of them are lines. This is the one that's going to get you in trouble. It can either be called Ray CD. If you call it Ray DC, they're going to mark it wrong because the C has to be under the segment part. The D has to be under the arrow part. If you put the D under the segment part, that means it's going that way. You with me? So they will mark it wrong if you put the D under the segment and the C under the arrow. These don't matter because they're both segments. These don't matter because they're both arrows, but they will bust you in a heartbeat on that one. See the difference? Mm -hmm. These are not hard. You just have to know the little nuances, the little things about it. Now, the next one is the protractor. The protractor is easy, but then when you go to use it on Alex, and I'm going to pull up the protractor on Alex. I already have it ready somewhere. We talked about brain fuse. Here's the protractor on Alex. It says use the protractor, and a lot of you don't know how to use it or hadn't gotten to this problem yet and you freak out when you get to it. You click on the protractor to bring it over. Okay. Now you have to make two clicks. The green arrow has to go on the corner. It can't go a little bit over, it can't go a little bit over, it has to go exactly on the corner and you click. Then y'all start doing all kinds of craziness. The zero has to go on a side. Now, if I put the zero there, I can't read anything. I have to put the zero on a side, not a little bit off, but it has to be directly on the side, and I click. So the zero has to be on a side so that I can read the other side. Let me do it again, yep. So I put the green on the corner, and then you're going to move everywhere. The zero, I can't put it here because I can't read the other angle. 
The zero has to go on a side so that you can read the other side. So that will be 140. We good? So when I type it in, it's going to be 140 degrees. Let me do one more. More practice. So I click the protractor to get it here. The green corner can't be off of it. It's got to be exactly on the corner. Click. Then it's going to start going crazy. You come to the zero. I can't put it here because I'm not reading anything. I put it here, click, and then I read the other one. It's halfway between 70 and 80, 75. so it's going to be 75 degrees. Does that make sense? All right. Acute, obtuse, and right. An acute angle is a little angle. When you think of a cute little puppy, a cute little baby. Anything that's cute is little is little. So when I think of a cute little something, so an acute angle is anything that's little, less than 90 degrees. A right angle, we've already talked about, is exactly 90 degrees. Obtuse. When I think of obtuse, I think of obese. Big. So obtuse, I think of obese. Big. So an obtuse angle is an angle that is bigger than 90 degrees, but less than 180. So any of those are obese, obtuse. Straight is exactly 180. So we have a cute little, we have a right, we have an obtuse or obese big, and we have a straight. So when we look at the angles up here, they want us to look at angle A. Here is angle A. It's 110 degrees. What kind of angle is that? That is obtuse. That's big. Angle B, that is acute. That's a little angle, less than 90. Angle C, Obtuse, it's bigger than 90, it's 100. And angle D, that is a right angle. So you just have to know what the words mean. Good? All right, supplementary and complementary. This is actually written on your formula sheet. So if I come over here to my formula sheet, On the back side of my formula sheet, it talks about supplement and complement. Let me do select all, slide down a hair, and pull this up. So this is written on my formula sheet. It says a supplement and a complement. A complement is two, uh, two angles that measure 90 degrees. The way I remember that, C for complement means corner. So it is two angles, this angle and this angle, that make a corner. How many degrees make a corner? 90. So a complement is when you have a corner and you have two angles that add up to a corner. So if I have an angle here and I say this angle is 30, this angle has to be 60 because they have to add up to 90 degrees. So a complement just means two angles that add up to make a corner. Supplement, the S in supplement, reminds me of a straight line. How many degrees are in a straight line? 180. So all I do is I have two angles that add up to 180. So, this is telling me I have a supplement. So I have a straight line, and one of my angles is 35. I want to know what the other one is. So a supplement just means you have two angles that equal 180. You know what one is. You want to find out what the other is. So if they add up to 180 and one is 35, the other one has to be 145. 
So it's not hard once you know what the definition of the word means. So the missing angle is going to be 145 degrees. Here, they make a complement. A complement means they make a corner. So if one of the angles is 44, we want to know what the other angle is. So because they make a complement, that means they make a corner. A corner is 90 degrees. So if they add up to 90 degrees and one of them is 44, the other one is going to be 46. And like I said, that's on your formula sheet. It's not that you have to memorize it. Cool? All right. Now, when you name triangles, triangles are given two names. It's like we are. We're given a first name and we're given a last name. Triangles are given names by their sides and they're given names by their angles. It's like they're given an inside name and an outside name. This is their outside name, and this is their inside name. So when you look at triangles, you can look at their outsides, and you can look at their insides. Now, if their outsides are all the same, if all sides are equal, we call that an equilateral. So if all the sides are equal, we call it an equilateral. Equilateral literally means all equal sides. If two sides are equal, two equal sides, what do we call that? Two equal sides. Isosceles. And the way I remember that, see those two S's? Two S's stand for equals two equal sides. SS, two sides equal. That's isosceles. You have a side and a side, so two equal sides. Now, if none of the sides are equal, what do you call it when no sides are equal? No equal sides. Scaling. scaling. The way I remember that, a scaly fish is ugly. No scaly fishes look alike. They're all ugly. So a scalene is an ugly, scaly fish. None of the sides are equal. I have to have stupid ways to remember stuff. <laughs> so you either have no sides equal, two sides equal, or three sides equal. So it's either a scalene, an isosceles, or an equilateral. That's by looking at its outsides. Now, by looking at its insides, you're either going to have all the angles the same. So um, I'm going to have this angle and this angle and this angle the same. And they're all going to be baby. Little angle, little angle, and little angle. If all three angles are little, we're going to call it an acute. Because what do we call little angles? Acute. Now, if we have a big angle and two little angles, we're going to call this an obtuse. If we have a right angle with two little angles. So this time we're looking at the inside. We have little, 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 big, little, little, and right, little, little. Now, I have people who tell me all the time, well, if it's an obtuse, shouldn't all the angles be obtuse? Well, let's think about it, y'all. If I draw an obtuse here and I draw an obtuse here, a triangle has three sides. I just drew all three sides. And as Calvin says, it's not a triangle. So, you have to have an obtuse angle but then you have to close it up to make a triangle. So a triangle is always going to have two baby sides and then one angle this big. Or it's going to have a right and then you've got to close it up. So a triangle is going to have two babies no matter what, two baby angles no matter what because you've got to close it up. Does that make sense? So let's name them. 
Here, we only want to know, is it acute, obtuse, or right? So we're only looking at the angles. Baby, baby, baby. Acute. Acute. Baby, baby, big. Obtuse. Obtuse. Baby, baby, right. Right. Obtuse. Obtuse. Now, when I was doing, this is the only book I have ever in my life seen do this. This is how I've always taught it. This book says, if it is an equilateral, it is also an isosceles. This is the only book I've ever seen do this. Their definition of isosceles is two or more right angle. I mean, two or more equal sides. So, if it's an equilateral, they also call it an isosceles. If it's an isosceles, it's just an isosceles. But if it's an equilateral, you automatically call it an isosceles. This is the only book that I've ever seen do that. I don't want to go back to this problem. So. Three equal, two equal, or one equal, or no equal? No. Nope. This one's going to be a scaly because none of them are equal. <clears throat> scaly, yucky fish. Two equal, three equal, or none equal? This one's going to be a sosceles because two are equal. This one has all three equal. And because it's equilateral, we also call it an isosceles to make Alex happy. What about this one? Two equal, so we call it an isosceles. We cool? If it's equilateral, you have to call it an isosceles as well, just to make Alex happy. That don't make any sense. Their definition of isosceles is two or more equal sides. I've never heard another book in 22 years say that, mm -hmm. except for this book. So just to make Alex happy, if it's an equilateral, they call it an isosceles as well. It's going to mark it wrong if you don't call both an equilateral and an isosceles as well. I know. I know. We good? All right. There is a um, rule on your formula sheet. That's fine. There's a rule on your formula sheet right above complementary and supplementary. The rule says that the angles of any triangle add up to 180 degrees. So that means this plus this plus this always equal 180 degrees. And we've talked about that in here. So to find the missing angle, we're going to do 180 minus 87 minus 30. That's just one of those rules. So the missing angle is going to be 63 degrees. Cool? Now, Caleb, I think these are the ones that you wanted to be to look at, the missing angle ones. This, I think, we worked on before, and half of y'all can't stand these. Find the missing. It was something like that. Some of them had the X on the outside. Yes. <laughs> we have all kinds of different variations of this. Now, when you do this, your goal is to get to X. X is inside the triangle. So we need to get him inside the triangle so that we can use the triangle rule. And wherever X is, we want to work towards X. So X is out here. So we have to visually realize that this angle and this angle are supplementary which means they form a straight line, which means they add up to 180. So for this one, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see right here that if this is 150, this has to be 30 because they add up to 180 because they make a straight line. Now the purpose of me getting in the triangle is so that number two, I can come and look at this, and I have a 30 
and a 34. So now I can come over here. So this is the triangle rule. The triangle rule says that they all add up to 180. So I'm going to do 180 minus 30 minus 34, and I will get my missing angle. So 180 minus 30 minus 34 is going to give me the angle that I'm trying